Hi, welcome to the Best Travel Channel again. My name is Gareth and I'm here at the Commercial Vehicle Museum in Leyland. Leyland has a rich history in transport. In 1896, the Lancashire Steam Motor Company was established. It became Leyland Motors and peaked in the 50s to 60s, producing buses and lorries. It acquired Jaguar and Rover in the mid 60s, but now just produces Leyland lorries. One of the first engines on show is the Fowler B6 Showman's engine. Built in 1905 as a road engine, it later became a fairground ride operating a switchback ride for travelling fun fairs. John Fowler, the man behind the design, was a leading figure in his field. Before petrol lawnmowers, you had steam powered lawnmowers, though few survived due to unpopularity. Here is an example built in 1893 for large sporting lawns. A small paraffin steam engine powered the motor. On display here are two impressive fire engines, the Leyland E IS-5 and the larger Merriweather fire engine. The latter, built in 1938, was used to put out fires during the Blitz during the Second World War. When the company name Reliant are mentioned, there is only one name that comes to mind, the classic three-wheeled Robin. Here is an earlier Reliant three-wheeler, the TW9 truck also known as the Ant. It was built in Oswald Twistle from 1978 to 1986, was made from glass enforced plastic and had a 750cc engine, reaching a top speed of 90 miles per hour. Here are two classic buses, and they are officially the only buses that are ever on time. The Foden steam wagon was the lorry of the 1920s, it weighed more than it could carry, and was a left-hand driven wagon, and unlike other steam wagons, didn't always need two people to operate it. The engine was located over the boiler, meaning a driver would often have to lean over in order to see where they were driving. Built in 1909, the Thornycroft gun tractor won a competition set by the War Office. It could carry heavy artillery, was quicker to ignite the engine than earlier engines, and as it was steam powered, didn't emit plumes of smoke that would alert enemy forces. The Model T Ford was one of the most popular cars of the 1920s. It was designed to be affordable, costing three months salary. It was durable and versatile. Tin Lizzy, as it was nicknamed, was mass produced 15 million times and made up 40% of the total number of cars on the road in the US at the time. It did have many issues though. The petrol fed into the engine via gravity, and its reverse gear was more powerful than the forward gears, meaning the Model T would need to be driven up steep hills backwards. It was also extremely uncomfortable to drive at its top speed of 45 miles per hour. What a bone shaker. When TV licenses were introduced in post-war Britain, the General Post Office had to tackle the problem of people watching the television without a license, a rather large loophole at the time. TV detector cars were introduced in the 1950s, with very conspicuous aerials to detect electromagnetic radiation given off by TV sets. Here we have a Scammell mechanical horse. It was built in 1934 to replace horses in yards and warehouses. It could turn full circle in under 20 feet, while carrying a 16 feet trailer. Whether it was gallons of ale or gallons of petrol, the Leyland Octopus could carry it all. This octopus in particular, or rather its driver, got into a bit of bother delivering Guinness when he overloaded it and police gave him the choice to turn back to Preston Docks or face arrest. The octopus returned to Preston Docks, but the load never reached its destination. The lorry was left to fall into disrepair. From monstrous sized octopuses to miniature scampi, there's everything at the Leyland British Commercial Vehicle Museum. Back in 1985, Smiths wanted to create an eye-catching advert for their scampi fries, but figured driving a real lorry underwater might be problematic, so they built a scaled down version instead. This AEC Mammoth 08 was an 8x4 truck that was used in the 1960s to establish trade routes through the rugged outbacks of Australia's Northern Territory 
home to Uluru Rock. The Leyland Tiger Cup was a bus manufactured between 1952 to 1970 and along with being in service in England and Wales was also exported to Southern Asia, West Africa, the Caribbean and Oceania. Popemobiles have come in various shapes and sizes, depending on the nature of the Pope's visit. This Popemobile, built for Pope John Paul II for his visit in 1982, is a custom-built Leyland T45 constructor, an 8x4 tip alloy essentially. Bulletproof windows were included following an assassination attempt on the Pope the year before. The deck of the Popemobile allowed the Pope to offer mass. Personally. This to me resembles the Playmobil recycling bin lorry I had as a kid more than it does a Popemobile. But hey, discussions like Vatican wait another day. Oh no, I did it again. Well, that's all for today's tour, but make sure you join me for part 2 where I sample Japanese food from Sakura Valley in Leyland. See you soon!